Hello everyone, in this chapter we are going to see one application of the concepts that we have learned in chapter 5 elasticity, 6 and 7 producer and consumer surplus, which is the cost of taxation. So just let's do a quick review. If you remember, a tax drives a wedge between the price buyers pay and the price sellers receive, and it raises the price buyers pay, lowers the price sellers receive, and reduces the quantity bought and sold. These effects are the same whether the tax is imposed on buyers or sellers. And on this screen, you see that the equilibrium price and quantity without tax is labeled as PE and QE. Now let's impose a tax, which is T dollars. And if you remember, this tax is going to create a wedge. So let's see that buyers pay PB and sellers receive PS. And the quantity here with tax is lower than the equilibrium quantity without tax. So revenue from the tax is going to be T dollars of tax. This is the tax times QT, the amount of the quantities bought and sold in the market. So from chapter seven, remember that total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus, and it maximizes equilibrium. With taxes, consumer surplus decreases, because why? Buyers are paying higher prices, PB, and they are buying also lower quantity, QT. Producer surplus decreases as well, why? Because sellers receive PS, which is lower than the equilibrium price they receive without tax, and they produce and sell lower quantity, which is QT. And government gains tax revenue, which is tax, T amount, times the QT. So what happens to total surplus with tax? Let's start without tax. Without tax, if you remember, producer surplus is the area between the equilibrium price here and the demand curve. Therefore, it's the triangular area A plus B plus C. Producer surplus, on the other hand, is the area between the equilibrium price PE and the supply curve. Therefore, it's the area D plus E plus F. And since there's no tax in this scenario, tax revenue is zero. Now, total surplus is the sum of consumer surplus plus producer surplus. Therefore, it's A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. Now let's see when the tax is imposed. With the tax, consumer surplus drops to A. Why? Because now the buyers are paying PB price, right? And consumer surplus is the difference between the demand curve here and the price buyers paid, therefore it's A. And for producer surplus, it's also smaller area. Producer receive PS price and the supply curve. So the area between PS and the supply curve is F. But on the other hand, government is going to collect tax revenue, which is B from buyers and D from sellers. So the tax revenue is B plus D. And total surplus is CS plus PS plus tax. In this case, A, consumer surplus, F, producer surplus, B plus D, which is tax revenue, and total is A plus B plus D plus F. And now let's compare the scenario without tax. Without tax, it was A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F, so the tax reduces total surplus by C plus E. C plus E is called the dead weight loss, DWL of the tax, which is the result of the fall in total surplus and why do we see a decrease in total surplus is because we have a market distortion here. We are now selling and buying less quantity. So here, there is one buyer who's willing to pay PE, but doesn't want to pay PB. This guy gets out from the market. There is a seller here whose cost is greater than PS, so this guy doesn't want to sell because making negative return. So this guy gets out. Therefore, because of this distortion, we have a smaller total surplus. So QE minus QT units not sold because of the tax. 
Let's see one example to understand that weight loss and the gains from trade. Zaria is taking her laundry to Eaton's Dry Cleaning and the laundry services business. For this arrangement, each month, Zaria is willing to pay 165 and Eaton's cost is 140 They agree on a price of 150 per month. So let's calculate consumer surplus, producer surplus and total surplus. Let's start with consumer surplus. She is willing to pay 165 and she pays 150 So therefore her surplus is $15. Let's calculate producer surplus. Eaton's cost is 140 and he's going to earn 150 at this equilibrium price. Therefore producer surplus is $10. So let's look at total surplus, 15 plus 10, 25 dollars is the total surplus. Now in the second scenario, the government imposes a 35 dollars tax on all laundry service providers. Now let's calculate consumer surplus, producer surplus and total surplus. Eaton needs 140, it's the initial cost of dry cleaning services, plus now he needs to pay 35 dollars to the government. So he needs 175 minimum to provide this service. But Zaria's highest willingness to pay is 165. So she's not going to pay 175. And trade doesn't happen. The tax has made both worse off. Why? Because we have the debt weight loss of $25. What is this debt weight loss? It's from the scenario when there is no tax, we have the total surplus of $25. But now it's lost because Zaria is not going to buy the product, Eaton is not going to provide the service. How about the government in this scenario? The government gets zero dollars in tax revenue because Eaton and Zaria are not trading. So everybody is worse off. We have Zaria here, we have Eaton here, we have the government here. None of them is getting any dollars from this transaction because there is no transaction. Now let's look at this example. First, we will calculate consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total surplus without a tax. If there is no tax, the equilibrium price is here, right? $200. And the equilibrium quantity is 100. Let's start with consumer surplus. This is the equilibrium price. And it's the area between demand curve and the equilibrium price. This is consumer surplus. Now, for producer surplus, it's the equilibrium price the area between equilibrium price and the supply curve, that's producer surplus. The total of consumer and producer surplus is the total surplus. Here the height is $200 and then base is 100. So let's calculate this area, 200 times 100 divided by 2, 100, which is 10,000. Consumer surplus is $10,000. Let's calculate producer surplus. Here we have 200 and the base is 100. So 200 times 100 divided by 2, which is again 10,000. So total surplus is 10,000 plus 10,000, which is 20,000. This is the first case. This is the scenario without a tax. Now let's look at question B. If a $200 tax per unit is imposed, compute consumer surplus, producer surplus, tax revenue, total surplus, and debt weight loss. Now we need to find out a tax line that is equal to $200. So here is 50, 50, 50, and 50. Therefore, I'm going to draw the tax line here. Okay, now here this represents the price buyers pay after tax and this represents the price sellers receive after tax. So now let's calculate the consumer surplus. Remember consumer surplus is the price buyers pay and the demand curve which is this area. Therefore consumer surplus is equal to 100 times 50 divided by 2 which is 50 2500 now let's calculate producer surplus it's this area 
which is 100 times 50 divided by 2, 2,500. The tax collected by the government is this area. This is the rectangular area. Therefore, it is, this is 200 times 50. So it is 200 times 50, which is 10,000. Government collects $10,000 of tax. Now the final thing we need to calculate is the dead weight loss. Dead weight loss is this area. And this has here a base, which is 200. And the height, which is 50, right? 100 minus 50 is 50. Times 50 divided by 2 which is equal to 5,000. So dead weight loss is 5,000, government tax revenue is 10,000, producer surplus is 2,500, consumer surplus is 2,500. The next topic we are going to discuss in this video is the determinants of dead weight loss. The main determinant of dead weight loss is the price elasticities of supply and demand. If both curves are more elastic, then the more dead weight loss we have. Just think about the definition of elasticity, it shouldn't be really hard to understand the relation. When a product or service is elastic, both buyers and sellers are very price sensitive. So any small change, they give up or they consume less or produce less because of the price change. And when more people get out from the market because of the elasticities, we have larger dead weight loss. So the greater the elasticities of supply and demand, the greater the dead weight loss of a tax. Let's see one example here. So here, as you see, supply is almost vertical. That means supply is inelastic. Okay. A change in price leads to a small change in quantity. This is quantity equilibrium without tax. This is the quantity with tax. Therefore, dead weight loss is small. Now let's look at this scenario. Supply is elastic and the same tax is applied to this market. And here, quantity equilibrium here, quantity tax is here. So as you see, the greater the change in quantity supply due to a change in price, we have greater dead weight loss. The same is true for demand too. When demand is inelastic, a change in the price leads to a small change in quantity demanded. Look, demand curve is steeper here. This is equilibrium quantity without tax. And here, this is the quantity with tax. And therefore, dead weight loss is small because quantity with tax doesn't change much. Now, if the demand is elastic, even you impose the same amount of tax, look what happens. Quantity equilibrium without tax, quantity with tax. And therefore, the greater the change in quantity demanded due to a change in price, and the greater the dead weight loss. Now, let's do this example to understand the relation between elasticity and the dead weight loss. In each situation, explain if the dead weight loss of a tax would be larger if the tax were imposed on only Mountain Dew or soda in general airfare in the short run or airfare in the long run, groceries or meals at fancy restaurants. So in each case, you need to determine the elasticities. Let's see the first one, Mountain Dew or soda. If you remember from chapter five, a good with many close substitutes such as Mountain Dew has a more price elastic demand than a broadly defined good such as soda. So Mountain Dew, if the price of Mountain Dew increases, you can purchase, for instance, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or any other soda. But if the soda prices in general increases, you don't have too many options, right? You can either drink orange juice, tea, coffee or water. You don't have a close substitute. So a tax on Mountain Dew would cause a larger dead weight loss than a tax on soda. Airfare in the short run or airfare in the long run. Again, from chapter 5, the price elasticities of demand and supply are larger in the long run than in the short run. 
because in the short run it's hard to make adjustments but in the long run people can make adjustments to their consumption. So a tax on air travel would cause a larger dead weight loss in the long run when the demand and supply of airfare are more elastic than in the short run. Groceries or meals at fancy restaurants, again from chapter 5, the demand for necessities, groceries are less price elastic than the demand for luxuries, meals at fancy restaurants. So a tax on restaurant meals would cause a larger dead weight loss than a tax on groceries. So we need to now discuss how big should the government be, because if we understand now the effects or costs of taxation, then the next question is, should the government increase taxes? Why government should increase taxes? Because if the government size gets bigger, that means government expenditures are increasing, the government should finance its expenditure by taxing at higher rates. So if taxes result in large debt weight loss, the debt weight loss is equal to strong argument for a leaner government, does less and taxes less. If taxes impose small debt weight loss, government programs are less costly than they otherwise might be. Then argument for a more expensive government. Now in the US, marginal tax rate on labor income is 40%. This 40% includes social security tax, Medicare tax, federal income tax, state income taxes, and which is the biggest source of government revenue. So we need to ask this question. 40% marginal tax rate on labor income. How big is the debt weight loss? And the answer depends on the elasticity of labor supply. So what do you think? Is your labor services elastic to price changes or inelastic to price changes? So the question is, if the wages are reducing because of the high tax rate, do you prefer to stay as a full-time worker or do you get out from this full-time job? Economists do not agree on the elasticity of labor supply. Some economists believe the labor supply is fairly inelastic. That means it's almost vertical. So here is the wage rate, here is the amount of labor, and labor supply is almost vertical. And this is the demand for labor demand and supply. Their argument is workers in their prime working years and main breadwinners of their families, they do not give up their full-time work even if the tax rates are increasing. And tax on labor leads to a small dead weight loss. If you think that labor supply is inelastic, remember, even if you impose the same tax compared to elastic labor supply, you don't see too many people leaving their job, right? This is equilibrium without tax, and this is with tax. So that weight loss is going to be small. Other economists, on the other hand, says that labor supply is more elastic. Labor taxes are highly distortionary. Many groups of workers have elastic supply and respond more to incentives. So their argument, first, many workers can adjust their hours, second, some families have second earners, some discretion over whether and how much to work. Third, many of the elderly can choose when to retire, may decide to work part-time. And fourth, some people work in the underground economy to avoid high taxes. And the last thing we will talk today is the Laffer curve. So Arthur Laffer is an economist and you are going to discuss this week about Laffer curve. And Leffer argues that if you initially increase the tax rate, the tax revenue is going to increase, but at some point an increase in the taxes going to decrease the revenue collected by the government. So for instance, the tax rate is 40%, increase to 50%, maybe you can increase the tax revenue, but then if it's 80%, that means every $100 you earn 80% goes to government, you are going to lose many labor in the market, therefore you're not going to collect tax and tax revenue is going to go down. So here you see one section that asks the experts an opinion. A cut in federal income tax rate in the United States right now, which is 2012, would lead to higher national income within five years than without the tax cut. And as you see, economists are not sure about it. The answers vary, 43% agree, 48% uncertain, and 9% disagree. As the tax increases, debt weight loss increases, even more rapidly than the size of the tax. 
tax revenue increases initially, then decreases, the higher tax drastically reduces the size of the market. Let's see this on the curve. Initially, the tax is T per unit, and initial debt weight loss is the yellow triangle area. Now the tax rate is doubled. Look what happens. Debt weight loss doubles more than that. If you triple the tax, the debt weight loss increases more than triple. When the tax is small, increasing it causes tax revenue to rise. You can see from the size of the rectangle, from yellow to red one. But then, when the tax is larger, increasing it causes tax revenue to fall. Look what happens. This rectangular blue one is much smaller than the red one. When a tax increases, that weight loss rises even more. This is the first curve. And the Luffer says that when a tax increases, tax revenue initially increases and then decreases. And this is the end of this chapter. Thank you.